It is Thursday, September 15th, 2011. I'm Alex Jones, your host. This is InfoWars Nightly News, a true revolution in information warfare against tyranny. Thank you for joining us. It is you, the viewers of this critical transmission that have made this program possible. Coming up tonight, we have got an amazing interview scheduled with Mark Moreno of Climate Depot, dealing with the fall of the greatest con artist of the 20th and 21st century. We're talking about Al Gore. That's coming up. Then we're going to talk to Wayne Madsen, who went to Indonesia. He's been getting death threats, you name it, and had CIA spooks following him, trying to shut down his interviews. He did confirm that, well, Obama did become an Indonesian citizen. This has incredible ramifications for his eligibility for the president. That's coming up at the end of the show tonight. It's supposed to be 30 minutes long. It's always an hour or more. We can't help it. There's too much information. It's real. It's unscripted. It's teleprompter free. Thank you for joining us. Now... Let's get into the economy. It was always meant to be imploded by design. We told you three and a half years ago with the first banker bailout, it was only going to get worse. We told you that every single point of the way since then. Not because we're being pessimistic, but because we know that if we reverse these globalist policies, we can have incredible prosperity. This is a consolidation of our economy. The United States has the highest poverty in its modern history in the last 100 years. That's been reported even by the Associated Press. It is just incredible. We've become a third world nation. Mortgage default warnings have surged in August. And they believe it will be the biggest month ever uh, by September for mortgages. How is that for your Obamanoid recovery? Continuing, uh, again, jobless claims, inflation rise, manufacturing gets weaker. Well, they've got all these incredible regulations going against business here in our country. The bottom line is this. The social engineers have set up a depression by design so they can offer their solution, a global government run by the private banks that engineered this fraud. And if you give in to that level of tyranny, you'll give in to the next level. And that's what's happening. Now, I want to go to a compilation of clips here of different White House officials and the head of the Federal Reserve, Tiny Tim Geithner, all of them, saying our economy was getting better in the last three years. The whole time they knew we were going into a depression. Here it is. The policies that we are undertaking, uh, notwithstanding short-term fluctuations, will lead to a uh, strong and stable dollar in the medium term. You, you, American economy was falling off the cliff in the fall of 08 and the first months of his administration. And he put in place the most creative, the most forceful set of economic measures we have ever done as a country. And because of that, we prevented a second Great Depression. And the economy has now been growing for more than a year and a half. More than two million jobs in the private sector since job creation started again. Faster job creation than the last two recoveries. These are total BS numbers. They claim 9% unemployment. Even 60 Minutes says it's 22%. Most economists, 24 or higher. Their answer is carbon taxes, more regulations on American business. They are killing this economy so they can consolidate it. And their answer to the next crisis is give us more money. And then it's always give us more money and give the private offshore banks more of your tax money. It's amazing. Now, shifting gears into some other subjects, dealing with the incredible police state unfolding worldwide, not just here, but in England. Three-year-olds are branded racist and homophobic, put in government database. That's right, um, 30,000 plus, 34,000 children, including people as young as three, are now being put in criminal databases for bullying or repeating things they've seen on television, all part of the social engineers getting everybody into the criminal justice system. This is the new form of tyranny. The Daily Mail reported racists age three, toddlers among thousands of children accused of bigotry after name calling. This is the political correctness, divide and conquer to get us all at each other's throats, as if a three-year-old knows what's going on, quote, racially. Uh, Continuing, don't worry, in Michigan they've passed a law 
where they're putting everybody's children in a database. If you're even one pound overweight, you're putting a database. If your children don't make you lose the weight, you're taken to a CPS center and, well, put on drugs, and the, and the state government gets a bunch of money uh, in the process from the federal government for taking over your life. Uh, but don't worry, Miss Obama is lauding the Olive Garden and other big chains. They have announced that they're not going to let people uh, order food like full fat milk or french fries that isn't good for them. And she's lauding the fact that the restaurants are going to follow the federal government's orders and monitor everything people eat. And they're coming out with taxes against people uh, who eat things that they say aren't healthy. And all over the Western world, they're talking about taking people's children away from them uh, if they are shy. That's a normal instinct of boys and girls, the people they don't know, uh, to not want to come over and talk to them. But the government's answer is, hey, Big Pharma paid us off. Your kid is shy. We're going to put them on a drug that's going to basically eat their brain. How's that sound? But don't worry. Uh, the social engineers know you're awake to sodium fluoride, radioactive isotopes, lead, mercury, arsenic in your tap water. So their answer is to fear monger all over national TV and tell you that apple juice is evil because it has biologically bound trace amounts of arsenic in the seeds. So when companies crush the entire apple, there's a tiny bit of arsenic that's been proven as a trace element is needed for the uptake of other vitamins and minerals. But their answer is to start restricting that devilish apple juice. So that is going on as well. Now, I played you that economic clip where they're telling you how wonderful the economy is, but George Soros, who said in the last five years he's having a great economic crisis, says that we must embrace mass centralization of power in Europe, a new banking dictatorship, or another great depression will ensue. And then you give him more power and pay your taxes to him because he sold you some Ponzi scheme derivatives, and things only get worse. They don't get better. That's the moral of the story. The globalists get you into a crisis and then always offer you more tyranny as the solution. Mark Moreno and then Wayne Madsen are coming up with some groundbreaking interviews. But first, I want to get into some other treason. It is now admitted that France and England are sending a delegation to meet with al-Qaeda, who they admit has been given control over the North African country of Libya. That is the areas that they control uh, Muammar Gaddafi is still fighting them, and they say that Al-Qaeda has been given cruise missiles and everything else, but as we pointed out, um, in association with this visit, they're not discussing the fact that they've put Al-Qaeda in power, but separately, in a schizophrenic fashion, NATO is coming out and saying they may have to have war with Al-Qaeda, who's now gotten control of Libya. These are the so-called freedom fighters. Now, getting into the Snoop Society, uh, this evening. Congressman Lamar Smith from right here in Central Texas has introduced the See Something, Say Something legislation. You know, in the Constitution, you're able to face your accuser in court, but this says now that people can anonymously make up lies about you, and you can be thrown into a gulag for the rest of your life. And they're running TV ads everywhere saying, if you see a piece of paper blowing down the road or a box on the side of the street, go into a hysteria and call the government. And that's already been happening. They've been at 50 plus airlines, the FBI admitted, on the last holiday shut down and land because people were kissing or went to the bathroom or one guy passed gas and everybody thought it was a bomb. I'm not, I'm not joking. The wicked flee when none pursue. Land of the free, home of the brave. How about land of the cowards, home of the slaves? It's time to wake up and stop levying these criminals in government that are robbing the daylights out of us, fearmonger us into submission. Meanwhile, more and more, I see cases in the snitch society where people that don't buy the right hunting license are banned all over the country from hunting. You swipe your license to get a hunting license. And, and, and I saw a report uh, out of the Salisbury Post today, uh, the Drudge Report carried it as well, that a man who didn't have the right license in another state to kill a 14-point white-tailed deer has been globally banned in a global database from hunting. So this is how freedom dies, not with a uh, big bang, but with just a slow decline as this private corporate global government picks up steam against free humanity. We take you now, my friends, to an interview with Mark Moreno 
of Climate Depot, and then Wayne Madsen. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and stand for true investigation and true debate, as this Nobel Prize winner does, standing up to Al Gore, you need to support and subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv. All right, we're about to go to Mark Moreno. Well, the story made headlines across the world. Nobel laureate resigns from society because of its global warming fear-mongering. We're going to talk to Mark Moreno, really one of the leading people in the last decade exposing the fraud of man-made global warming or anthropogenic warming, to discuss the fact that Al Gore has gone from saying that he is the ruler of the earth, the high priest who speaks the truth and no one can challenge him to now scrabbling around, uh, behaving like the con artist he is, and desperately trying to get people to pay attention to him and telling the world that he controls reality, but everything is conspiring against him. The sea levels are dropping, the ice is growing at record rates, and more and more scientists are pointing out it's the sun, not carbon dioxide, that's less than 1% of the world's atmosphere. Joining us to break all of this down is Mark Moreno, a voice in the wilderness long ago, but he stuck to the facts, so now the truth is coming out on top. Mark, thank you for joining us, but you warned me, joining us live on Skype, a thunderstorm's rolling in right now, which we never had thunderstorms or rain before, so perhaps... <laughs> Never had weather before man-made global warming, so it's possible that at one of Al Gore's predicted storms could interrupt our interview here. Well, yeah, everything. Dust storms, earthquakes, hot weather, cold weather. I mean, there, rain never fell until man did bad things. So do you want to apologize right now that there's a storm uh, maybe approaching right now? Yes, I do. And I, you know, if, if you look at this, I wish we had had carbon taxes in the 1930s. We could have prevented the Dust Bowl drought from happening. If only we had visionaries back then. <laughs> the inventor of the internet. Yes, what's happened now is Al Gore has started his 24-hour campaign, and it is so atrocious, so offensive, that even committed global warmists are bailing on Al Gore. The UK Guardian's Leo Hickman has said his stomach stank when he started watching it. He couldn't believe that every bad weather event was being linked to global warming. He said Al